everybody so today I'm gonna to give my testimony of how I used to be an exotic dancer and and uh, how I became a prophet of the Most High God it was a process it was a process so if you watch part one you know then you know I used to be a Buddhist all right if you haven't watched part one go back and watch it so a little bit about me I'm a Christian author and I put all my testimonies in my books like bits and pieces wherever it felt necessary to fit I put it in there but I have not released my official memoir about my life yet but I'm going to put that in there from the from the uh, pole to the pulpit amen from stripper to prophetess I'm going to put that in an official book whenever God releases me to do so so anyways you know, like I said, I, I heard the name of Jesus at 12, and we uh, got, I got baptized at the age of 12, and uh, guess what? I didn't go to church. I didn't go to church, you know, back until I got maybe 20, 21. All right, so you can imagine, you know, that's like 13 plus years without church. Almost, you know, it's not 13, excuse me, it's like 7 plus years, uh, you know, without going to church. You know, so it seemed like the enemy had a hold on me. All right, I, I got worse. You know, because I didn't, I didn't know any better. I didn't have anybody in my life to uh, hold me accountable, to feed me the word of God. So you know, it was just worse for me. You know, I, just, I was a hellion. I was just bad, you guys. So I was a runaway. I have to go run away, shack up. I have to go run away, just do evil things. You know. Like my mom and dad tried to ground me. You can't ground me. And I was just run away. Just do crazy stuff. I used to be a fighter. I used to be fighting girls. You know, I didn't even initiate some of the fights. But I was just so mean and so angry. You know, I just took it on. Girls three times bigger than me. I didn't care. And I, I got dangerous. I wasn't fighting with my fists all the time. No, I had pins. I had knives. I had things because I knew that I'm so small that I got to get crazy. So, these, these women that were bigger than me, they didn't want to fight me because they knew if they fought me, they would like see the evidence. Because I had long fingernails back then, so that was known as a scratcher. So anyways, this is the kind of girl I was. I'm just trying to set the backdrop. Okay, so you guys, whew, this is a, a journey. So here I am, you know, I had an aspiration at 12 years old to become a stripper. I remember watching the Jenny Jones show and they used to have all these strippers on there. They used to be like ugly girls, like nerd girls like I was in school. You know, my teeth used to be jacked up and just, you know, just like nerdy girls overlooked to becoming beautiful women. And they showed their bodies. So I was like, oh, that's me. Oh, I want that to be my story. So that was my aspiration. And then I had a uh, aspiration of just being this famous dancer all over the world. So uh, my name was Chariz Char Charisma Glow, and I had this long bleach blonde hair, like platinum blonde hair. These long fingernails uh, that glow, that glow in the dark, like the black lights. You no, know, so my thing was just you know the glow, you know. Because, you know, when you go in the club, like back in the day, the, for my clubbers back there, that that you, that they got delivered uh, back in the day. Um, you know, everything going to black light, right? So, that was my story. So, guess what? On my 18th birthday, I went down there and I got a job. The man was like, oh, you want to work here? Have you ever did this before? I said, no. He said, show me your breast. So, I said, ta! And I showed him. He's like, okay, you got the job. All right. So, I remember just hustling, hustling, hustling. I didn't know what I... I didn't know how to dance. I don't got no rhythm, you guys. But I remember I just had, you know, hustle. You know, and I remember just making more money than most of those girls in that club. And my first night there, every every girl in the locker room, they got mad. They started cursing me out. They threatened to kick my behind. They said, we don't want you here. You know, you can't be here. What's wrong with you? Taking our money, taking our clients. I was like, wow. So I had beef on my first night of work. You know, so I had to leave that club and go to another club, and it was always like that for me because I made a lot of money, you know, and, and you know, I initially worked at the black clubs. At the black clubs, you know, the minimum a night I used to make $200. Then I went to the white clubs, and I used to make $500 a night just dancing for the white men, you know. And then on the good nights, I would make a 1000 plus, you know. So I was good at it, and I, I just blew through money. It was crazy, you know. Uh, one one year I made seventy two thousand plus, just crazy, you know. I blew through it. I had the 
cars, I had uh, the rims, I had the surround sound in my car, I had the clothes, I used to take trips, just blowing through the money. You know, if I know what I know back then, I would have invested something and had something to show. But anyways, alright, so I got into modeling and I got into acting. I wanted to be a model, you guys. Alright, so I remember just posting pictures online, posting pictures online, and I put some of this testimony in my book. Uh, it's in a lot of my books, uh, Set the Capitals Free, A Book of Deliverance, and, and Empowering the New Me, but I put some of this in all of my books. Alright, so I remember just putting pictures online, just wanting to model and stuff like that, and then this casting director, he saw me. And, you know, I was so naive, you guys. I wanted to see what I wanted to see. And this man was making passes at me, moves at me, telling me I was his. But I just was just so naive. And I just wanted to see what I wanted to see. So this man, he flew me all the way. I was in North Carolina. He flew me all the way down to Texas to be a feature in a movie, to be an a extra, excuse me, an extra in this movie. The movie was legit. You know, um, I'm not going to tell you what the name of it was, but I was an extra in this film. And I remember the first night I got there, you know, I was all wild and crazy. You know, so I went to the strip club, you know, uh, and I was just tipping the girls, you know, making it rain and all kind of crazy stuff. Just acting crazy, you know, just sipping bottles and stuff like that. So that the, the casting director that flew me down there, he was interested in me. He wanted me, but I didn't want anything to do with him. I was like, yuck, you know. So he left me in the club by myself, and I had to get um, a taxi back to the room. So I was ready just to dip out, get my stuff, dip back, dip out, and hop on a plane back and go home, you know. But then I noticed when I got in the room, my cell phone was ringing. And it was like one of my one of my girls calling from North Carolina to check on me. Like I used to have like big sisters. They would be so possessive over me. Like, this is my little sister. I love her so much. So my cell phone was ringing. And then I looked. And I traced my cell phone to a safe. So this man had my purse with my cell phone in it locked up in the safe. And had all my credit cards and my money in there. So I'm like, okay. I can't go anywhere because I got to get my, my belongings, my purse and stuff like that. All of a sudden, this man busts in the room. And I was like, give me my stuff, please. I can go. And then he cursed me out. You know, he pushed me up against the wall, cursed me out. And then, you know, I was, I was a little feisty thing back then. You know, so I, I had a mouth and I just told him off. And all of a sudden, he picked my stuff up, you guys. He threw it off. 13, he threw it out the window. We was on, like, the 13th floor. He threw it off the window. 13 stories, y'all. And I remember my suitcase landed in the tree. Clothes and I used to have uh, some expensive makeup, you know, my, all my makeup ruined because it had just rained or something, or they had like a sprinkler and the grass was just wet, and I was just devastated. It's like, really? And you guys, that broke me. I feel like scum. I'm like on um, somebody's shoe, like the lowest of the low on the earth. And then this man forced himself on me, you guys, and I, I just laid there. I just felt dead. I was so scared. I was like, oh my god, this man's gonna kill me. So I just did what he wanted to do. So anyways, you know, this man, he manipulated, pressured me, and he pretty much would let me out of sight. Uh, you know, so I was in a relationship with the same man for about a year and a half. And uh, everywhere I went, you know, if somebody was to look at me, he would get mad at me. You know, uh, we went to a restaurant. Um, I wanted to get, like, some pancakes and eggs or something like that. And the man was just looking at me. You know, because he was older, they probably thought he was my dad or something. And he used to get so jealous. And um, he told me not to get the food. And he made me eat like a banana or an apple or something that he had, you know, in his uh, backpack or something. So I couldn't eat the pancakes and eggs and stuff like that. So I just got tired of it. So here I was with this man. Uh, he used to take me across the country from like New Mexico to California. Um, Arizona places like that and I was dancing in random clubs you know dancing and uh, just making money just dancing just you know so I danced in LA I danced in Hollywood I danced in different clubs um, uh, what is it called and, and uh, Albuquerque New Mexico just different clubs just dancing you know um, and that was a life I danced in uh, El Paso Texas just traveling dancing at different clubs you know every night so then this man he 
He said, I want to I wanna marry you and this. I love you so much. So he took me home to meet his mama. And his mama was a God-fearing man, a uh, woman, believe it or not. She was a God-fearing woman. And she liked me too. I was like, okay. So she took me to church for her. You guys, when I walked in this church, I didn't feel comfortable. I just felt God immediately. You know, I start feeling convicted. I start feeling dirty. I start feeling like, oh my God, I'm a horrible person. Oh my God, I don't belong here. I just wanted to run out. I just was so uncomfortable in my own skin. And God was dealing with me. Here I'm in the church crying, just weeping. You know, trying not to cry, trying to fight it. You know, but nobody recognized it. You know, the leaders didn't even look. That's why leaders, you need to, your guest patients to your guest. Amen. Do altar call. You know, because God be moving. So, here I am trying to fight back. Just like, oh, I can't let anybody see me cry. So, all of a sudden, my life has never been the same. After I left that church, I felt a pull on me, a pull of God on me. So, here I am shacking with this man. And this man was, at the time, I had no idea. But he was like the same age as my mother. You know, gross, right? But he lied and manipulated and told me he was maybe about 10 years older than me. But then I found out the truth. You know, when you're shacking and you're living with somebody, of course you're going to find out the truth. So, I, one day I looked and I saw his wallet. And I just looked at his IDs. I was like, man, this man didn't lie to me. So, that's another strike. You're jealous. You're manipulated, controlling, all this kind of crazy stuff. And then I felt the pull of God, and I was like, oh my God, I need to get my life together. Oh my gosh, I just don't feel right. So I told him, you know, remember, he didn't want me to get out of his sight, you know. He's kind of kept me there, uh, different places with him. So I said, I need to go home. I need to visit my mama. You know, I said, I I I'll come right back. I promise you I'll be right back. I didn't care, you guys. I left most of my stuff there. I, I took half of my stuff, and I left the other half there, and I left some good, expensive stuff, and I never get, got it back clothes and shoes and purses and all kind of things you know a blow dryer like a sit on a sit uh a hooded hooded dryer you know things like that just with all that stuff there i didn't care you know so i went back home and i could see why god was pulling me back you know so i went back home and my sister ashley she's uh the closest sister to me she had just got saved all she was talking about was jesus but at the time it seemed like i got worse before i got better I was like, I don't want to have nothing to do with God. Nope. And I remember all these church people to come to our house all the time and do church meetings. And here I am, you know, walking by them, going to the club to go dance that night to make some money, you know. And they, they were praying for me. They were praying for me, literally. So I remember just waking up one day, I felt this eerie feeling, this eerie, eerie, eerie feeling. Like, oh my God, something bad's going to happen to me. Then I heard a voice in my head. You're going to die today. And it was the devil talking to me. You're going to die today. I'm like, what? You know, psh, whatever. Nothing going to happen to me. So I shook it off. So then, you know, that feeling went away. So then I forgot all about it. You know, I think the church people were in my house at the time. And it was like, hi, Kimberly, how are you? And I was just like, yeah. And I was trying to hurry and walk out of there, you know, and just go make some money. And I remember it was pouring out raining that night. And uh, my sister had given me a Bible two weeks prior to that event. And I put the Bible on my passenger seat in my car. And I remember walking out the house and then I got in the car and started driving. And the drive wasn't that far. You know, maybe like a 10, 15 minute drive up the street. Maybe like a 15 minute drive. And I started feeling deaf again. Like, oh my God. And all of a sudden, I looked up in the, the rear view mirror. I, I was stopped at the light. And then there was an empty lane beside me, you guys. All right. And then I looked up in the rear view mirror and I just knew the car behind me was going to slam in, and slam inside of me. You know, slam into me. I just knew it. You know? And now here I am. I'm bracing for impact. Because I was like, this person behind me can't be that dumb to hit me when it's an empty lane beside me. But yep, they sure did. Just, just you know, it was crazy, you guys. So, the person that hit me was high as a kite. They hit my car. They pulled over in the median. They got out. You know, and I didn't know at the time, you know, I didn't have no sense either. You know, I thought if you got an accident, you're supposed to stay there and not move your car. But if you get in an accident, if it's in a dangerous highway, please move your car over. I didn't know that. So anyway, she pulled over in the medium, still right there in the way. You know, I had my hazard lights on or whatever like that. But anyways, she hit my car. She's like, hey, how you doing? Can, can, can I get a black and mild?